Good morning, good morning, people of God. Good morning. We worship God. We praise him. We give him glory. Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. We shout unto you, O voice of Zion. We lift your name up, Jesus. We know you are here in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can I get a witness? Oh, yes. God is good, and he's worthy, and he's worthy to be praised. We're going to worship him now. In the beauty of holiness, we thank God.
our praise. That we can give our God. He is already good. He's great and marvelous and matchless. Hallelujah. We worship. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Hallelujah! Oh, we 
worship takes place. It's good to be online and we thank God for something happening when we come in person. Lift up the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness? If you love God, just say praise him. Glory. joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye men. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with sin. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord have a blessing in reading of his holy word. As we look to our heavenly Father, can we please stand? Our Father and our God is once again, we just come into the house of prayer, dear Lord, just to worship you, to celebrate you, O Heavenly Father, for truly you are worthy to be praised, O Heavenly Father. So we just pause right now, dear Lord, to invite the presence of your Holy Spirit here, where well, we already feel the presence of your Spirit here, O Heavenly Father. It's moving throughout this whole church, O Heavenly Father. We just want to say thank you, O Heavenly Father. O Lord, we come right now, dear Lord, to continue to just bless your holy name, O Heavenly Father, for truly you are worthy of all the praise, O Heavenly Father. We ask right now, dear Lord, that you would bless this service in a mighty special way, O Heavenly Father, that you continue to touch the man of God that would bring forth your holy word on today. As he decreases, you increase in him, O Heavenly Father. Speak powerful words, dear Lord, but we need your words right now for encouragement, O Heavenly Father. We need you right now, O Heavenly Father. Invoke your Holy Spirit in this place, O Heavenly Father. And dear Lord, we just want to thank you, O Heavenly Father, for the five have been serving you, O oh, Heavenly Father, and serving your people, O oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you for their sweet, sweet spirit and their prayers. They are prayer warriors, O oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you for their service unto you, O oh, Heavenly Father, and unto you, your people, O oh, Heavenly Father. This is our prayer. In Jesus' blessed name that we pray. Amen.
the Lord, everyone. I just have one question for you. Is there anybody in the house who loves my Lord? Let's give him glory and honor. He's so worthy. <laughs> Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I feel liberty in the house today, and I'm grateful for it. It's my honor to welcome you this morning. Aren't we blessed to see another day? Yes. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of our godly pastor, Reverend Dr. Joseph W. Lyles, and our precious First Lady, Sheila Lyles. <laughs> the Bible says give honor where honor is due. It's all right to give honor. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone, everyone that's in our sanctuary this morning, and welcome to those who are joining us via live stream. We love you today. We honor God. Those in the room, please turn to someone. And with those smiling eyes under that mask, give them a little nod. Because if we can't hug, we can nod. We will greet one another. God bless you and your families. Fort Foot, join the Bridge Ministry every Friday in this month of October for our roundtable series on a variety of subjects. Again, every Friday at 6 p.m. using the Bible study link, join Bridge for our dynamic speakers as we tackle relevant subjects of today. See you there. Good morning, mighty men of God. Please join us this Saturday morning, October the 29th at 9 a.m. at the Panera Bread located at 8823 Woodyard Road in Clinton, Maryland. Our guest speaker, Reverend Stephen Riddick, will lead this powerful prayer breakfast with a focus on standing toe-to-toe -to -toe against domestic violence. Have a blessed day and see you at the Panera Bread in Clinton, Maryland, or on Zoom this Saturday morning at 9 a.m. It's that time of year again, folks. Fort Foot Baptist Church will be holding its annual Hallelujah Night on Saturday, October 29th at 5.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. That's right, we're moving back inside the building this year. There's going to be a movie, snacks, and even candy. So bring your kids, your grandkids, your cousin's kids, your friend's kids to this night of fun at Fort Foot Baptist Church. Hope to see you there. Hello, church family. My name is Cheryl Tompkins. I'm a personal trainer here at Fort Foot, and I have sponsored the spiritual size class. This year, we're going to start September the 19th, every Monday. So check your calendars. The time will be from 7.30 to 8.30. Just check the calendar for the Zoom link so we can get started and get in the body fit. Because the body's not yours, it's a temple, and we should be good stewards. The health, your health is your wealth. So let's just get started and get our body in order. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing. time as we come to celebrate five individuals going a moving to their emeritus status. I hope 
hope and pray that the Lord will be with me as I continue on this journey to get to where these individuals are moving to. Church, we come today to celebrate five members moving to the emeritus status. We're celebrating 86 years between the deaconess and the deacons. Deaconess Beatrice Howe, Deaconess Deaconess Susie Lee, Deacon Albert Coleman, Deacon Alan Harrell, and Deacon William Scott. A emeritus is like a retired professional or a minister. A professor will stop teaching, but might be given the title of emeritus, which means that they can be remembered as a successful professor. In Latin, emeritus means a soldier who has retired from their duty. God, serving God is one of the essential principles of the Christian faith. As believers are expected to help the church with a joyful spirit, the Lord tells us that we should care, counsel, encourage, help, love, pray, and support one another. These deaconess and deacons have provided that relationship to God and to the others here at Fort Foot Baptist Church through their service. The diagonal will come to you as members of the emeritus status for your input since you have a record of distinguished service. We must, we must remember that serving others may not always be easy, but we must be rewarded in eternity. Second, we must not forget that all of our gifts and talents that we use for God's purpose are appreciated. Nothing we do for God is in vain. Matthew 24, 45 through 46 states, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Wise, his master makes him ruler over his household to give him food in due season. Blessed is that servant who is a master will find so doing when he comes. Today, we celebrate five individuals that have served others. Good morning, church. Today we celebrate, as Deacon McGuire said, two of our deaconesses who have gone into or will become emeritus on this day. Deaconess Beatrice Howell again, and Deaconess Susie Lee. Amen? Amen. That being said, today we are acknowledging two of our deaconess sisters who have moved from one phase of ministry to another, from being active to that of becoming emeritus. They have worked very hard in the ministry as servants of the Most High King and will continue to work hard, but in a different capacity. We thank you both, Deaconess Beatrice Howell and Deaconess Susie Lee, for your active servitude. Now we are looking forward to what the Lord has in store for you as you work as encouragers for those of us who remain active in the ministry and to those who have become emeriti before you. 
You have both exemplified the examples of godly women, five of which comes to mind, being Mary, who demonstrated bravery and a servant heart, Rebecca, who demonstrated hospitality and a desire to fulfill God's will, Ruth, who demonstrated loyalty, Hannah, who demonstrated great faith, prayer, and praise, and Abigail, who demonstrated wisdom and compassion. We truly appreciate you and applaud you for what you have done and continue to do. We are honored that as you remain an integral part of our ministry, you will continue to serve all in our church, community, your family, and in any way that you possibly can. Now I'm gonna ask if all of our deaconesses can stand as we applaud you. Our deaconess, uh, both active and emeritus, if you would stand please. We pray God's blessings upon you both in a special way. To God be the glory for the things that he is doing, what he has done, and will, what he shall do. God bless you both. Amen. Amen, amen. We will now present you both with plaques. Um, Deaconess Beatrice Howell, we're doing this in alphabetical order. If you will come forward, please. Thank you. Deaconess Howell has been an active deaconess for seven years. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. And it's uh, one second, Deaconess Howell. As Deaconess Howell has received her plaque, I will now present her with her Deaconess Emeritus badge. Deaconess Susie Lee, if you will come forward, please. Amen. And her husband, who is Deacon Emeritus, Deacon Calvin Toby Lee. Amen. Deaconess Susie Lee has also worked actively in the ministry for seven years. Amen. And I will now present you, Deaconess Lee, with your emeritus badge.
Now can we have Alan Harrell. The plaque for the deacons reads, Fort Foot Baptist Church, in recognition of Deacon Emeritus Alan Harrell, the diaconate of Fort Foot Baptist Church, thanks you for 12 years of commitment, dedication, faithfulness, and untiring service to the diaconate ministers and to the members placed in your care. May God continue to bless you, given this appreciation, Fort Foot Baptist Church diaconate, Reverend Dr. Joseph Lyles, Pastor, Deacon Tamara McGuire, Cheer, October 23rd, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you need to watch over me. Now we would like to ask William Scott to actually come to me. William Scott has provided 29 years of service. Just one more thing to say uh, before we have con concluded. Um, this is just a joke. Just as uh, Deacon Tamra forgot to stand for his picture, he forgot to give me the plaque to read for the deaconess, so I'm not going to let them get one up on us. The deaconess, the deaconess plaque reads the same, yours truly, Chair. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Continue to pray for me. Continue to pray for me. So I, I like to make one final comment. So uh, Deacon Albert Coleman is not here. He has completed 29 years of service. He failed the other day, and so he's in rehab right now. And so continue to actually pray for him that he will actually recover from his rehab and his hip. Uh, and I will actually present him his plaque. Thank you.
What is this that I feel deep inside? It keeps setting my soul on fire. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. It makes me want to run on to Jesus' name. Whatever it is. 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 It won't let me. Oh, oh, my peace. I said it makes me love all my Yes, it does.
Thank you, Adorn, to praise and song for lifting our spirits once again. I greet you this morning with Jesus' joy. This time on last Sunday, I was tucked away in central West Virginia amidst the mountainous and scenery of West, wonderful wild West Virginia. Have returned to a metropolis called Glenville, West Virginia. Close to nowhere. Somebody said, but close to the heart of God. They gave me my walking papers in 1978 and I never returned. Saw some classmates that I had not seen since 1978. I said, where has 44 years gone? It was a blessed time of reflection, relaxation, and repose. God is good. While there, we were freaking a place called the Wesley Foundation, connected with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. Little did I know, God was at work far beyond what I knew. Some places in small towns of West Virginia, they only had church twice per month. And the off Sunday, when the pastor was not there, they would send us college students out to talk about the Bible. I, I noticed I said talk, not preaching. That's what I thought we were doing. But God was at work even at that time. So we give God glory. Made it back safe and sound last Sunday evening. Good to be home. Be so kind if you want to meet me in Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 35. Read along with me if you so desire. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the waves ceased, the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers and doers of his holy and precious word. Eternal God, our Father, we pray now you will continue to send down your power from on high, that your word will bring about a life-changing impact, a greater desire to serve you, a greater love for you, and a greater desire to be better witnesses. We give your name all the honor and all the glory. It's in the awesome, mighty, amazing, powerful, wonderful, resurrected name of Jesus that we pray. And all of God's family said amen, amen. and bless the Lord. With your help and prayers for a few moments this afternoon, I want to preach and teach on the subject, peace in the midst of the storm. Somebody say peace, peace. in the midst of the storm. You really can't talk about one of the synoptic gospels of which Mark is one, without at least mentioning the other two to give clarity and perspective. Matthew writes his book beginning with the genealogy. He had to prove to the Jews that Jesus was in fact the rightful heir of the throne of David. It refers multiple times back to the Old Testament because the Jews knew their Old Testament Bible. It's often called the Gospel of the King. Luke writes primarily to the Greeks, portrays Jesus as a son of man talking about Jesus and his humanity. John writes a universal gospel, portrays Jesus as the son of God. But Mark writes primarily to the Romans, reads much like an action-packed motion picture, going from one miraculous ministry scene to another. Mark is full of miracles. Eight times in the book of Mark, he tells us that Jesus has power over all diseases, Five times in the book of Mark, we see that Jesus has power over all of nature. Four times over all demons and two over death. I did the math. Comes to 19 miracles in the wonderful, marvelous book of Mark. So if you need a miracle, one place you can start is in the gospel of Mark. The text here begins by saying, and the same day. Your English teacher would mark your paper with red blood reading down. If you began a sentence in your paragraph, 
at the same day. But it takes us back to the previous pericope or portion of scripture, Mark chapter 4, 21 through 34. Jesus begins teaching about the parables of the kingdom of God. He said, you don't want to hide a candle under the bush or your bed. It needs to be on a candlestick so it can be seen. In fact, he goes on to tell us that anything that's done, here or not, Jesus still sees it. Then he talks about sowing and planting. He said, you don't plant a seed on Saturday and expect to reap the fruit on Sunday morning. You can plant a seed of faith like a mustard seed, watch it blossom, grow and bloom in a miraculous manner. But back here, peace in the midst of the storm. And the same day, and when the evening was come, he, Jesus said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. I know you already know this, but let me share it one last time. When you read your Bible, slow it down. Every word, every phrase, every sentence is of utmost importance. Notice he said, matter of fact, the blessed part here is that Jesus is still speaking to them. As long as Jesus is speaking, then there is hope, there's security, there's comfort, there's care, concern, and compassion. Long, he said, John chapter 10, my sheep know me, and when I speak, though they know my voice. Jesus said, not an apostle, not a, a disciple, let us pass over to the other side. He did not say you had to make it to the other side on your own or by yourself. Let us, I heard an old man say with bad grammar this way, Y'all always talking about what y'all going to do. I want to know what us is going to do. Point I'm making is that Jesus said, here is a great promise. Don't miss it. It's critical to the rest of this text. Let us pass over unto the other side. You are going to make it to the other side because I promise you, but you don't have to make it alone. Let us. I'm with you. Can I get a witness? Here's what I've learned. It's been very helpful and encouraging for you and for me. Every problem you have God has a promise. I repeat, every problem you have, God has a promise. So when you've got a problem, find God's promise. You won't memorize that. You'll learn it and hide it in your heart. It'll bring life, liberty, and freedom to your soul. Don't nobody love you. Isn't that a lie? The Bible says, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He said back in old days of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, Jeremiah, tell him that I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with love and kindness have I drawn you. Isaiah 43 said, when you go through the waters, you won't drown. Through the fire, it won't consume you. By the way, I love you and your precious. Every problem, God has a promise. We're blessed to have the word of God. We can read it, learn it, hide it in our hearts that I might not sin against you. So the promises of God will come forth in our heart. He sent away the multitude, verse 36. It's good to have public corporate worship, but before public and corporate worship, there needs to be private and personal worship. Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says this, Jesus rose up a great while before day, went to a solitary place by himself and prayed. Mark 6 46 said, here he goes again. He sent all the disciples away. He went to the mountain to pray. Here's what I'm saying. You and I need some solitary, private time alone with God, and we sure need some mountain time, just you and the Lord. Turn off the radio, turn off the television, turn off the H-box, turn it all off, and just get alone to hear from God because of all that's going on in our world today in the midst of the chaos, cacophony, and confusion. We need to hear what thus said the Lord. He sent away the multitude, took even as he was in a ship, and there was also with him other little ships. Verse 37, and there arose a great storm. Following the great promise arose a great storm. The Sea of Galilee is famous for its sudden and severe storm. When the storms come up in the Sea of Galilee, you don't have time to evacuate. You must go through. But he promised, remember the promise. Sometimes promises come as a part of God's curriculum. He had been teaching them about the parables of the kingdom. Good to study for the test. Now you got to take the test. This tea bag says, sweet tangerine. Mm. 
positive energy. This one says African robos. We know what the label says, but you know and I know. You won't really know the flavor till it's dipped in hot water or a storm. So God allows storm not only because of our disobedience, but sometimes it's a part of the obedience. You've been serving the Lord faithfully down through the years, making sacrifice, fasting, and praying, studying to show yourself approved as a workman or workwoman who need not be ashamed, loving your family, activating Proverbs 22, 6, raising up godly children to develop a spiritual legacy, helping everybody, going beyond, out of your way, and still storms come. God's not trying to crucify you. He's trying to purify you. He's not trying to destroy you. He's trying to develop you because storms help our faith to develop. We don't like them. He did not say it would be smooth sailing all the way from A to point B, your destination. By the way, spiritual maturity is not a destination. It's a journey. And a part of that journey is some storm. No matter how holy you are, you can be the pastor, you can be the deacon, you can be the deaconess, you can be the trustee or just a chairperson or missionary and evangelist. You still will have some storms in life. But the promise is you're going to pass over to the other side. Go and make it tough. Road may get rocky. Storms may come. Winds may blow. This is not... I checked on NASA and NASA said there's a thing called a category seven but that's a hypothetical storm if it could get that far it'd be over 250 miles per hour of wind but right here was not a hypothetical storm it was a real storm in all of our lives there arose a great storm of wind category five and the waves began to beat into the ship so that it was full you had it up to here Sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. You about to lose your mind up in here because I'm, I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. I keep, amazing how I keep from going under. I'm in a storm. My world is falling apart. I cried all night long. I read Psalm 30 verse 5 that says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. But how long will this night last? I've been going through this for two and three and four years. And I've been seeking the Lord. I've been turning down my plate. Crying out to God, God, do you hear me? God, where are you when I, I'm in a storm? It's one thing to cruise the Caribbean and Cozumel and Cayman Islands and Bora Bora. Look out of the blue coral green waters of the Caribbean. But it's a whole nother thing when the water starts coming in your cruise ship and it's full and it's not splashing, it's beating. Can you feel the passion of this text? And it's not full. God, we're we about to drown, we're about to die. Peace in the midst of my storm, not after the storm, but in the midst of it all. John 16, 33 says, in this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have already overcome the world. Can I get a witness? Waves, multiples, beat into the ship so that it was now full and about to sink. But, in the midst of the great promise, sometimes the great storms come as an affirmation. When you're really trying to serve God, what I found out about storms is this. The closer you get to the epicenter of the eye of the storm, the more turbulent. But if you can pray and press on just a little bit further and get it in the eye, then there's peace. But oh, sometimes the storms make it hard to see the sun. Look like the sun never going to shine again. Dark clouds of ominous pain hover over my world like a heavy London fall. I'm in a storm. Brother Douglas Miller said, keep my eyes on the distant shore. Well, in a real storm, you can't see the distant shore. It's far away. Storms are also a metaphor for life. Sometimes there's financial storms. Too much month at the end of the money. I went to CVS a couple of days ago to buy some Corel lotion. $15 for one bottle of lotion. I, I just stay ashy. They're going to make me go back to Vaseline and shine it up. 
cars now cost as much as my first house. A loaf of bread. We stressing out about inflation. Have you heard of shrinkflation? Shrinkflation said the bag is the same label, same marketing tool, make the product look pretty, but it's only half full, but the price has gone up. Medicare says we don't care. Welfare says farewell. Social Security gives me insecurity. I'm in a storm. Then not only that, I got marital storm. We fell in love a long time ago, and now we're falling. If the grass was green on the other side, be careful, it might be AstroTurf. If you water your grass, it'll get green too. Put down some fertilizer prayer. Aerate it so it can breathe. Tell them that you love it. Tell them that you still care. Tell them that she's still the apple of your eye. Not only do I have financial storms and marital storms, I got family storms. My, my children, grandma said, my chimps brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I showed them love, made great sacrifice for my children and my grandchildren. They done lost their everlasting mind, got temporary insanity, breaks my heart. They blessed my heart when they came, and now they break my heart. I carried them in my lap when they were small. Now I carry them in my heart. I'm in a storm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I didn't do something right. I do all that I knew to do. I love them and care for them, and they still talk back. I'm in a storm. Oh, God, I left the world. Now I got a church storm. Church folk act like they don't have the Holy Ghost. Act like they don't even love the Lord. They worse than the world well, folk that I left. Oh, God help me. I got an ecclesiastical storm. Now I got health concerns. Who doctors the doctor? Got the doctor scratching his head. Said, don't come by yourself. Bring a family. We know you got somebody we call idiopathic. We don't know what it is, but here's how we treat it. Wait a minute. How do you treat what you don't know what it is, where it came from? We said, this can't happen to me in Maurice. We're former athletes, as if we are exempt. Storm, best friend, longtime friend, betrayed me, never thought. They said, we'll stick with you through thick and thin, but thick got thin, they thin now. Oh, God, I'm just sick of life. I'm in a storm. I'm a teenager. I'm a millennial. What crazy world have y'all given us? I couldn't graduate away with my class. Couldn't take baby girl to the prom. I'm just, y'all don't understand. I got issues and nobody's listening. You ain't got to be 28 to have a problem. You ain't got to be 35 to have issues in a storm. Y'all don't understand my teenage stuff. I'm, 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 I got mega media blitz with the IT and social media. They put my whole life on Facebook, though I can't get my face in the book. The Bible don't seem relevant. Is it an ancient, archaic, outdated, antiquated document? I'm just in a storm. I need help. I'm trying to connect. My friends drinking Dre Goose. They're about to make a fly. I don't want to drink Johnny Walker Red. I want to walk with the Lord. I want to know more about Matthew Mark than marijuana. But I, I'm trying my best not to vape. I'm trying to walk in victory. I don't know. I'm in a storm. I need help. But I got good news. Jesus is on board. I got a great promise. I got a great storm. I got a great problem. I got a great savior. Somebody say great savior. I'm not in the storm by myself. Jesus is on board. I'm not going to drown in the water that the Savior made, nor the boat from the wood that he made. If Jesus is with me in my storm, he promised never to leave me, never to forsake me. I'm going to make it. He promised I'm going to get to the other side. Sometimes up, sometimes down. Almost level to the ground, but I'm calling on the name of Jesus. He's on board. He came on when I got saved. Master, master. Master, don't you care that I'm about to perish? Don't you care that I'm about to die? When you call him master, you admit, acknowledge, and agree. You are the creator. I'm the creature. Mold me. Make me to be what you want me to be. Master, have thine own way. You got the power. I know you can. I know you will. You did it for my mama. You did it for my daddy. Help. 
You promised to be a very present help in a time of trouble. I'm glad in the midst of my great storm, I have a great savior. He's able, he's able, he's able to carry me through, push me through, hold me up when I'm falling down, give me sight when I need insight. Master, I read 1 Peter 5, 7. When you say, cast all of your cares on me, for you care for me. It makes all the world different when I know that somebody cares. When mama can't help me, daddy can't help me, brother can't help me, sister can't help me, I got a God that is able. Great is the Lord. Great is to be praised. He's so great. His greatness is uncertain. He said, I got all power in heaven and in earth. He cares for me. Peace in the midst of my storm. Don't wait till the storm over. Go ahead and shout and praise God right now while you have time. While there's air in my lungs, blood in my veins, I will bless the Lord at all times. Storms may come, winds may blow, but I got my eyes on Jesus Christ. He's going to bring me out. May not come when I want him, but it's always on time. They that wait on the Lord shall renew my strength. One, I'm going to mount, I'm going to bring that eagle. I'm going to run and not be weary. I'm going to walk in that faith. I'm going to serve him with all of my heart, all of my praise. Long as there's air in my lungs and blood in my veins, I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. He's worthy of the glory, worthy of the honor, worthy of the praise. I'm going to make it. You're going to make it to the other side. i got to hold on just a little while longer. Press on for the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Peace in the midst of my storm. And he arose. Hey, I'm not by myself. And he arose from his sleep and rebuked the wind. I told you earlier that he had power over all of nature. He did not request or suggest the wind cease. He rebukes the wind. Shut up. You've been blowing on my folk long enough. You've been blowing on my folk long enough. Shut up. And said to the sea, you be still. You don't think it's strange and powerful. Next time you see the wind blow aside, just tell the wind, be still. Just don't let nobody see you. When you go to the beach and the waves are boisterous, tell the sea to behave. Just don't let nobody see you. They may want to call 911. Little men in white jackets are coming escort you to a place called St. Elsewhere. But Jesus arose. When a child of God is in a storm, God will rise up. When a child of God is in a storm, God will rise up. When a child of God is going through, God will rise up and rebuke the winds of pain, rebuke the winds of adversity, rebuke the wind of heartache, despair. Rise up, King Jesus. And the winds cease. Our late pastor, Reverend Brown and myself, Reverend Dr. David Durham, would say, when God said to the wind, shut up, the wind lay down and went to sleep on the bosom of his divine command. Say, you know who's talking to us. We better behave ourselves. You got to speak the word to your storm. And watch the wind cease. And then there was a great calm. Be still. They said to him, Master, don't you care that we perish? Stop trying to pass on our panic to Jesus and allow Jesus to pass on his peace to us. He said, why are you so fearful? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know that I've got all power? Don't you know I'm El Shaddai in the Old Testament? I'm almighty. Don't you know, I knew the storm was coming before it came. Matter of fact, I allowed the storm so your faith could develop and prosper. 2 Timothy 1.7, you know where I'm going. 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. No, I'm not going to lose my mind about the storm. I'm not going to lose my testimony and witness in the storm because I got power. 
love and of a sound mind. Isaiah 26, 3 says, I will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me because you do trust in me. Trust me, let my weight down on God while we're trying to work it out. God has already figured it out. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Stop leading to our own understanding in all of our ways. Acknowledge him. He will direct our path through the storm, through the rain. There was a great calm. John 14, 27 says, My peace I leave with you. Oh, no, not as the world gives only a temporary peace. My peace I give you. He leaves us peace and he gives us peace. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. You should know that by now. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Stop being so anxious and fretting about anything, but in everything. Somebody say everything. Everything, everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Take a moment to thank God for the storm that's already brought you through. Help me, Holy Spirit. Because it passes prologue since you brought me through my last storm. You still got the power to take me through this storm and any future storm. Make my request known to the Lord. And the peace of God. Somebody say peace of God. Which passes all understanding shall keep and guard my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. There was a great promise followed by a great storm. Oh, but I got a great Savior. If you give me 30 seconds, I'll tell you how great, how wonderful, wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. In oh, no peace, no God. When you know God, K-N-O-W, you know peace. How is it that you have no faith? All that I've done for you, down through the years, blessings, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, healed your body, saved your marriage, blessed your family, gave you a job, let you retire. One blessing after another, stacked up, piled together, loaded you down with good things and blessings that you never could deserve. Now you have fear. And no faith. Pastor, I don't see my way clear. Stop living by sight. We live by faith, said the word of God. Will you find that? I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 117. Habakkuk chapter 2, 4. Galatians chapter 3, 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And Hebrews 10, 38. All five verses tell us clearly, emphatically, and unequivocally, the just shall live by faith. Hebrew writer said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. God, I want to please you so. Lord, I believe it. Help my unbelief. Peace in the midst of my storm. I'm going to get through this and be better than I was before I went in. Because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're not alone. Sometimes the devil makes us feel isolated. I'm the only sick, sad, sorry one going through. No, no. Other folk just not being transparent. Sometimes as church folk, we're so good at putting up spiritual facades. We don't want folk to know we're going through a storm. They might question our spirituality. They were in a storm not because of lack of faith. God allowed it. They knew that he could heal and forgive sin, but they did not know that he had power over the wind. Hmm. And they were feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey. If the wind and sea obey, what is my problem? Sometimes in life, it gets complicated, perplexing souls that drive out of the soul's travail and storms, challenge us. But there is a God watching over you and is watching over me. And they came to the other side of the sea. Help me, Holy Spirit. Look rough and rocky along the way. One of my members told me a story some time ago. They were cruising, I believe, in Alaska. It was beautiful. Then a storm came. 
They said, God, forgive me for anybody I didn't love at Fort Foot. Forgive me for every lie that I told. Every untrue, every, just, just in case I don't get back to 8310, this may be my last time this ship was tossed and driven on a sea of stormy sea. But by the grace of God, they made it back. We all have some. The deacon and deaconess, hmm, they help us with our storms. Deacons were called because there was church stuff going on. And the deaconess came to help them out to get through the church trauma. It's right, it's right there in Acts chapter 6, I believe. True? You can have the privilege to exercise a powerful ministry when folk in a storm by being a good listener. I know why God gave us two ears and one mouth. So we can listen twice as much as we speak. Sometimes as husbands, it's our nature to fix it. We're solution driven. And we've been helped now by our wives and fiancés that I don't want you to fix it. I just need you to listen. Well, why you tell me if you... I, I'm, I'm trying to fix it. My wife is a mental health professor. She said, let's practice reflective listening. Reflective listening, reflective listening means if you tell me back what I just told you. I, 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 heard, and I heard you. No, no. Tell me back what I just told you to be sure that you heard me. And look in my eyes when you're talking to me. Give me your undivided attention. When folk are in a storm, they don't know always necessarily need 35 scriptures initially. They just need you to listen to the heartbreaking storm. When somebody tell you, I want to die, listen. They might be serious. I'm about to take my life. They crying out in a strange way. I'm in a storm. I need help. And they came to the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes. If I had time, we'd go into chapter 5, but we don't have time because you don't have that much patience. <laughs> when they got to the other side, it was not just to know that God kept his promises so we could grow and develop. There was a man living in the graveyard. It's one thing to visit the cemetery for the interment. He was living there. God takes you and me through our storm so we can be blessed ourselves and so we can help others with their storm because we just came through. And we know of God's power. Somebody said, he's got the power to carry me through my storm to the other side. Let us stand. Though the storms sometimes keep on raging. Brother Maurice, can you give us one verse of that? Maurice, Maurice, Maurice. Maurice, can you give us one verse of, yeah, please. <laughs> What's the brother's name that sung that song? <laughs> Douglas Miller. <laughs> Douglas Miller, those are storms, keep on seeing. Sing praise on Sama. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes hard to tell the night from day. safely to that blessed place he had prepared so he the soul
Sometimes there's volcanic rain. We didn't plan that. church you don't know what the Lord may do on any given day if you're here today and don't know Jesus today's a mighty great day to come to know Jesus Christ would there be one today he give you peace in the midst of your storm I'm a witness if you never had a storm you couldn't testify that God would bring you out, but once you've had a storm and it brings you out, you know that you know for yourself. Those worshiping with us today online, the numbers on the screen are numbers for our anointed altar counselors. Wait with excitement to receive your call to share with you the blessed love of Jesus Christ. They'll tell you, we'll tell you now, God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Sin separates, but love communicates and integrates. Would there be one today? You can get a brand new start today. Stop trying to weather your storm by yourself. You can have some divine help in Jesus Christ today. Would there be one? Somebody. I feel somebody's heart churning today. Anybody need Jesus today to be their Lord and Savior? He's able. Somebody said he saved from the guttermost to the uttermost. If you had to reach way down. 
Sometimes storms break our heart, but a broken heart at least now open. Young folk, Jesus ain't just for old folk. We all need him. Would there be one today? Maybe somebody's here today that already knows this wonderful Savior. Feels led to, now to become a part of our loving, caring, growing church. We invite you to come forward at this time. We we'll welcome you to your new church family with open arms and love. Would there be one today? You may come if God is speaking. Can we give a final round of applause for our Deacon and Deaconess Emeritus today? Thanks for your service. La 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 last thing, then I promise, last thing to say today. When there's an MRI spiritually done of the church, if the deacon and deaconess are in good order, and a good report on the EKG, it's a sign of a healthy church. Thanks to you and your service to the Lord. We have been blessed by your service and your dedication. We are healthy. Still making progress, but we're healthy. Still breathing. Today is officially No Worries Sunday. Today is officially No Worries Sunday. Give your storm. Trust Jesus to take you to the other side. You're going to make it. I know you will. I'm tracking with you in the name of the Lord. Let us look to the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for being a storm tamer. You are an awesome God. Thank you for how you're moving in the church family, the Fourth Foot Baptist Church. I only go lift up the name of Jesus for you say that if I be lifted up, I will draw, not me, not you, but Jesus said he would draw all people unto him. Sinners will be converted. Saints will be encouraged. Above all, God will be magnified. Now I'm unto the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. And all of God's people said amen. Bless the Lord. Have a great day and a blessed week. We got extra goodies downstairs near the elevator. Left over from our food pantry yesterday. Pick up some free goods on the way out the door. By the elevator, you'll see the freebies. No charge. Jesus paid it all.